I know we have studied relative clauses before, but this time we'll learn a little bit more. Stay and find out the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Defining relative clauses are used to identify people. A dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist that works with actors on their accents. Non-defining relative clauses give further information about people. A location scout finds places to shoot scenes. He travels all over the world. A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. As we mentioned on the intro video, we have two types of relative clauses. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Let's look at the difference between them. Number one, defining relative clauses. The information in the clause is necessary. It shows us which person is being described or talked about. For example, the actor who starred in that movie is very talented. Number two, non-defining relative clauses. The information isn't necessary. It is extra information that is added to the sentence. For example, Tom Cruise who starred in that movie is very talented. I want to point out that commas are used before and after a non-defining relative clause. Think about the people involved in making a movie. Choose to and describe what they do using defining or non-defining relative clauses. One more time. I know we have studied relative clauses before, but this time we'll learn a little bit more. Stay and find out the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Defining relative clauses are used to identify people. A dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist that works with actors on their accents. Non-defining relative clauses give further information about people. A location scout finds places to shoot scenes. He travels all over the world. A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. As we mentioned on the intro video, we have two types of relative clauses. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Let's look at the difference between them. Number one. Defining relative clauses. The information in the clause is necessary. It shows us which person is being described or talked about. For example, the actor who starred in that movie is very talented. Number two, non-defining relative clauses. The information isn't necessary. It is extra information that is added to the sentence. For example, Tom Cruise, who starred in that movie, is very talented. I want to point out that commas are used before and after a non-defining relative clause. Think about the people involved in making a movie. Choose to and describe what they do using defining or non-defining relative clauses. Okay. So, More, were you able to listen to the entire video? Did you understand what we're defining and non-defining relative clauses?
Yes, I understand a little bit, but um, exactly where I can start with non-defined cloud relative, where um, my question is, is confused when I um, when I write the when I write the sentences, right? But I don't. I'm not sure where I can. I can uh, uh, where I start the the in define and non define okay clauses. You know okay. when when for example in, in one of the answers we had to write a comma. Uh -huh. But I confused. I confused. I'm so sorry. Where exactly finish? Or may or or, or I have to the idea. I have to get the idea when it's mentioned about the who that uh, i don't know if you understand what i, I understand you no problem oh, okay okay mm -hmm. so let me explain it like this one. when uh -huh. is extra information uh -huh. when is information not necessary uh -huh. you're going to use the comma okay because it's extra okay oh. so when is information that is necessary then you are not going to use the comma because it's necessary and you need that information. The, uh, this is a non-defining relative clauses. Correct. So non-defining, uh -huh. non-defining is extra information ah, okay. you use the comma. So, ah, okay. Let's take a look at the examples here. Yes. Okay. So if we look in part two, is the comma. Why is the comma? Because it's extra information. How do you know it's extra information? It's because if you eliminate, if I take this part in black, if I take the part in black out, I still have a complete sentence. For example, a location scout travels all around the world. And I have a complete sentence that is logical. Uh -huh. That's why it's non-defining because okay. you don't need this information yeah. to understand what is a location okay. scout. Okay. But yeah. in the first one, no comma. Uh -huh. Why no comma? Because if I remove who works with actors on their accents, is not clear. A dialect coach uh -huh. is a language specialist. Yes, but it doesn't yeah. tell me what they do. It only tells me who they are, know what they do. Mm -hmm. so that's why yes. it's defining, because I need to know exactly what that person does. That's why oh, it's okay. extra information, comma, no extra information, no comma. Ah, okay. Okay, I understand very... Uh, I understand about it. Thank you, teacher. Of course. Okay. So let me play it one more time for Anna mm -hmm. and Julissa. Let's watch the yes. video one more to make okay, sure that they understand. But oh, very sure. good question, Morena. Good question, and we're gonna try one more to see a little explanation. I know we have studied relative clauses before, but this time we'll learn a little bit more. Let's stay and find out the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Defining relative clauses are used to identify people. A dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist that works with actors on their accents. Non-defining relative clauses give further information about people. A location scout finds places to shoot scenes. He travels all over the world. A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. As we mentioned on the intro video, we have two types of relative clauses. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Let's look at the difference between them. Number one. Defining relative clauses. The information in the clause is necessary. It shows us which person is being described or talked about. For example, the actor who starred in that movie is very talented. 
Number two, non-defining relative clauses. The information isn't necessary. It is extra information that is added to the sentence. For example, Tom Cruise, who starred in that movie, is very talented. I want to point out that commas are used before and after a non-defining relative clause. Think about the people involved in making a movie. Choose to and describe what they do using defining or non-defining relative clauses. Okay, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of an example here with us. So for example, if I say that student or that student is very talented, you don't know, maybe it's Julissa, maybe it's Anna, maybe it's Morena, because I have three students, right? The student is very talented. But if I say the student who has their camera on is very talented, now is defining because with if I don't have this information, I don't know which student. This is the difference. With this information, I know specifically which student I am talking about. That's how you're going to get the idea between defining and non-defining. Defining is going to give you information that is necessary to understand who or what you're talking about. And non-defining is only extra information about the topic. Is that okay? Okay, okay. Okay. Yes. Now, I want us to be sure that we understand defining and non-defining is not only for people. We have many different words that we use. For example, we use the words who, which, where, when, the WH words. Who for people, where for places, when for time, and exactly the other one's the same, which for options, right? All of these help us to understand a little bit more about the different relative clauses, okay? So uh, if I say, oh, that city is, that city is beautiful. What city? There are many cities in the world, many cities in El Salvador. The city where Fernando Yort was born is very beautiful. Ah, now it's specific defining. Why? Because only one city where the person is born. This is the idea. The city where the president lives has a has great uh, a great garden. This is the idea between when you have defining and non-defining. Now, non-defining, Washington DC, where the president lives, is the capital of the United States. Why non-defining? Because if I remove the information, Washington DC is the capital of the United States, is complete sentence with complete idea. But, Washington DC, where the president lives, is the capital of the United States, is non-defining. It's extra information, not necessary to understand. So, so, okay, questions? Uh, I have an idea. Okay. Okay, an example for defining uh, relative clause uh, will be um, the city where Butifaras are very famous, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful city. Okay, so, so, okay. the city, the city where Butifaros are made, created, uh, packed, you need an activity. So, very good, almost correct. The city where Butifaros are made, and then the activity is very beautiful. Okay, thanks. Okay, Felicia, tell me the sentence. Let's see. Okay, uh, the city where the Butifaras are made, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful city. Correct. Okay. Very good. Is this defining or non-defining, Julissa? Is defining. 
Correct. Because in El Salvador, only one city makes putifaras. Cojutepeque. And if I don't have this information, I don't know which city is beautiful. It's okay? Yes, it's okay. Thanks. Good. Any questions? Anybody else? Any questions? Ana, Daniel, More? Oh, yes, it's clear. It's clear. Clear. Okay, great. So I want us to practice a few exercises. We're going to begin with very easy exercise. Only select the correct word, right? And then we're going to practice little by little, more and more difficulty. So in the chat, you can see, I'm going to put some links for you to practice. Please copy or um, and paste or open the links. You can check in this moment you should already start to get some of those links. Teacher, I entry later and I'm getting the idea. Uh, last, uh, you are uh, spoken about uh, defined and in uh, and undefined uh, pronouns. Correct. Correct. Okay. This is the idea for the relative clauses. Exactly. Defining and non-defining. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you should have five links. Do you have the five links? Are we ready? Yes. Yes. I'm so sorry. Yes. Almost, almost ready for me. Almost no problem, ready. No problem. <laughs> no problem. It's important that you get it and that you open it, and then we can try it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm ready. Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So, <laughs> as you. you can see, we have five links. We're going to have the complete time, twelve minutes, because it's only select. Only select the first parts. Not necessary. Only in the last part where we have to write. So. Let's start off 12 minutes with your partners. Choose the best uh, relative pronoun, uh, defining or non-defining. This is your decision, but you choose with your partner, which is the appropriate one to complete the sentences. <laughs> 